John Parker was a candidate for the U.S. Senate in the June 7th election. Uh, he was a uh, primary election, I should say. Uh, he was he has recently returned from Russia and the Donbas region on a, uh, where he went on a fact-finding mission to expose U.S. and NATO war aims and alliances in the region. Uh, John has received an award for solidarity at the Luhansk Regional Administration Building from the chairman of the government of the Luhansk uh, uh, People's Republic, Sergei Kozlov. He is the coordinator of the Harriet Tubman Center for Social Justice, and he's on the organizing committee of the Socialist Unity Party. So, John, please go ahead. Thank you. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, great. Okay, um, John and Steve and Camilla <laughs> covered a lot of great stuff, so I'm just going to deal with one topic, uh, the fascism in Ukraine. You know, Nazism in Ukraine is, in fact, a real problem. But in order to come to that conclusion, you need to understand that uh, corporate media is unreliable. Just check the so-called newspapers of record, the New York Times coverage in 1915 of the Lusitania incident. Our articles that were outright lies about the Gulf of Tonkin and Iraq weapons of mass destruction, both of which led the U.S. into wars that eventually killed millions. What did the New York Times, Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, TikTok, and out of Ukraine, Kiev Independent, and the Euromaiden Press have in common. They're all either funded by or staffed with Western and US intelligence members pushing the US narrative about the war in Ukraine, two of which are the Atlantic Council and the NATO's Atlantic Council and the Australian Strategic Policy Institute. Now, this must be considered when analyzing US imperialism's current attacks on China or this proxy war against Russia and Ukraine. Uh, when I first arrived in Lugansk in the Donbass region, I participated in a large religious conference of heads of the Muslim, Jewish, Christian Orthodox religions representing the Donbass regions and Russia. The conference was titled Traditional Religions of Donbass Against Extremism and Neo-Nazism. They apparently thought it was a problem and provided testimony to, the frightful, to that frightful fact. Um, when talking to socialists in the Lugansk region, our socialists are communists in Russia, they're all agreed and can point to numerous examples of the gross growth of fascism in Ukraine and how it's disseminating, not only in Ukraine, but around the world. Now, we saw the example of that in Buffalo recently with the killing of 10 black people in a supermarket by a white supremacist wearing the emblem of the Azov Battalion. Now, his influence can be traced directly to the Azov Battalion. This dissemination the socialists talk about in Lugansk and Russia was documented by Time magazine in 2019 in an article titled Like, Share, Recruit, How a White Supremacist Militia Uses Facebook to Radicalize and Train New Members. Now I'm going to quote the article. It said, outside Ukraine, Azov occupies a central role in a network of extremist groups stretching from California across Europe to New Zealand, according to law enforcement officials on three continents, and it acts as a magnet for young men eager for combat experience. Ali Sufan, a security consultant and former FBI agent who has studied Azov, estimates that more than 17,000 foreign fighters have come to Ukraine over the past six years from 50 countries. Now, last week, it took me just about three clicks on Facebook to get to the recruiting video of Azov Battalion, the, which is officially part of the military, the Nazi, neo-Nazis uh, in Ukraine. Just three clicks on Facebook to get to their recruiting thing on YouTube. Now, here's what a Lugansk militia soldier had, had to say that I interviewed uh, about the Nazi infestation in Ukraine. Um, and I asked him how, many, how much of the Ukraine military is really led by Nazis, and he said, um, well, you can't say exactly because those uh, forces began to create their own battalions in 2014, but then they became part of the official military and very much a part of the police, security, military, ministry of weapons. Uh, they, get, they got the opportunity to, to grow in these structures, and some became very important figures in state politics, and they're all well integrated. Um, in every battalion and every force, there are Nazis. Now, that's what this uh, soldier who was part of the Lugansk People's Militia uh, had to say. Um, now, that sounds like a problem to me. So maybe the left in the United States and Europe should not be so dismissive of the Russian claims of Nazis at their borders a country would sacrifice 27 million lives to stop the fascists during World War II. 
I didn't even mention that fact that what we found in uh, uh, one of the regions in Lugansk, a wall with a swastika and uh, the sonorand or the black sun and some other Nazi symbols where the Ukrainian had uh, just vacated the Ukrainian military. Um, and when we add the fact that uh, for the last eight years, the Donbass region was under the fire of torture, rape, and bombings for eight years since the Nazi-led military dominated the fighting in that region, and the fact that on February 22nd, over 100,000 Ukrainian troops were ready to finish the job and presented a humanitarian crisis of threatened genocide, not only did the people of the Donbass region have the right to officially plead for the help of the Russian government to stop that genocide, the Russian government had a responsibility to stop that genocide and also the existential threat at their borders with a country willing to become a NATO member state, willing to accept nuclear weapons that are able to be launched within reach of Moscow in just five minutes. And these weapons were in a state with a military led by neo-Nazis. Now we must understand that the opposing views to the US narrative about this war has been silenced in Ukraine by criminalizing all socialist and communist parties and the weekly jailing of journalists uh, daring to challenge that narrative. And in regard to comparison of Russia, quote, taking over countries versus the millions upon millions killed from NATO's wars on former Yugoslavia, bombing thousands of homes, uh, the U.S. and NATO wars of Vietnam, Korea, the 500,000 children killed in Iraq, and the turning of Libya now into a state that now has slavery against dark-skinned African people, um, and the crippling sanctions Camilla spoke about, uh, they're not being done by, by Russia, uh, which is actually helping to protect Bolivia, Venezuela, Cuba, Nicaragua, and other developing countries from the war and economic war by the United States. In the Ukraine, it started before 2014, but in 2004, in a shockingly honest 2004 report titled U.S. Campaign Behind the Turmoil in Kiev, Britain's established newspaper, The Guardian, admitted that the Orange Revolution was an American creation. They said, quote, a sophisticated and brilliantly conceived exercise in Western branding and mass marketing bankrolled with at least 14 million by the U.S. government. That's what the National Endowment for Democracy and the other uh, intelligence agencies of the CIA and the US government have been doing in uh, Ukraine. Now, the political left movement in the United States and Europe has a big problem that comes from a cultural disease developed especially by US capitalism's history of racism. Not only is there class bias, but the added dehumanization with all its arrogant trappings intrinsic to the system of racism carries over to anyone deemed as the other. In the US, the other is usually anyone who is non-white and is therefore not taken as seriously, not as believable, not as legitimate and reliable a source of information and definitely not do as much empathy. This is how white supremacy carries over even to other white people deemed as the other. And we are told by the US government who the latest other is. Sometimes it's the Iraqis and their leaders, or it's the Syrians and their leadership, or the Libyans and their leadership. Hell, after the rape and murder and desecration of Muammar Gaddafi's body, something that would never be tolerated in the least uh, of, uh, in any Europe, of any European or US head of state, then Secretary of State Hillary Clinton got away with joking about the killing. Because Gaddafi was the other, and any information coming out of Libya by an official or unofficial news service would be deemed unreliable here during the NATO targeting of that country. Any news coming from the former Yugoslavia during the NATO war in 1999 from Milosevic or news services would not be taken seriously. Any news negating or just challenging the New York Times articles or so-called proof from Amnesty International about the babies being thrown from incubators or weapons of mass destruction was deemed deemed as unreliable if it came from a government or non-government news agency in Iraq, because that was the news of the other, the new black people that can't be trusted. 
This is why the sources of information coming directly from white supremacist neo-Nazi military organizations in Ukraine is more trusted than those in the Donbass region, because the people of Donbass in Lugansk and Donetsk are the other. My friends from Barotva, who uh, the left refuses to even acknowledge their existence, a socialist organization there in Lugansk, uh, of, nor even mention them are part of the other. The Communist Party of the Russian Federation, the other. The 82-year-old woman in Dunbass region of Lubizny I interviewed at the shelter there, who was crying over the bombing of her home by the Ukrainian tanks and the loss of all her belongings and the woman just south of the, the woman just south of there in Krimskoye, I interviewed who identified the IDAR battalion as their occupiers, another neo-Nazi group. Uh, they're the other. The entire political leadership in Lugansk, the religious community, the Lugansk people's militia members, all the other, and deserving of neither an ear nor a heart for empathy. That's the problem. And we have to recognize that subjective disease plaguing our movement in the US and Europe. And those in the leadership of the US and European anti-war movement whose ethnicity allows them to receive a few extra benefits from white supremacy that non-white folks do not receive, they especially must be vigilant and check that their organization's politics, even if once was anti-imperialist, has not become infected by the arrogance toward and dehumanizing of the other. Thanks, sorry for going too long there. I'm Michael Hudson. I'm appearing here for the International Manifesto Group. If you like this video and ones like it, please subscribe for more information. Go to the address on the screen.